Hello and welcome to the Tally Talk podcast. Before we begin, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Tally. We're a mental wellness startup specialising in anonymous group conversations called Tally Talks. Our weekly Tally Talks provide our members with a safe space to speak and listen in a discreet setting. This podcast will give listeners a feel for our weekly conversations while being anonymous. For this podcast, all participants have agreed to the recording while keeping their identity confidential. What you are about to listen to can be found sensitive and distressing. Please be advised to read the podcast description and respect the confidentiality and anonymity of the conversation. If you would like to attend a Tally Talk, please visit www.tallyapp.com and click join a Tally Talk. Or if you would like to take part in the podcast, get in touch at hello at tallytalk.com. All links can be found in the bio. Thank you and enjoy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Tally Talk. I've definitely been looking forward to this Tally Talk, and I hope that you guys have too. So grab a cup of tea because I think you'll be sipping. We are talking about the talking stage. We've all been there. It's got positives, it's got negatives, and it certainly can make us feel a whole lot of different things. And I've got a whole bunch of fantastic guests with me today. So would we start by introducing ourselves? Let's just run through the list. Love Fairy, could you just introduce yourself? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me why you're here today. Hi, I'm um, uh, the award-winning author, relationship and dating coach. And I have uh, almost a, a decade of experience of dating an available man. So I'm really excited to be part of this conversation and to see what we can learn about each other and the talking stage. Thank you, Love Fairy, a decade of dating experience. I feel like I might have that too. (laughs) AJ, what about you? Hello, hello. My name is AJ. I'm a relationship and date coach as well as a therapist. And I am here to lend my various experience in the dating and relationship world and help out with the conversation as much as possible. We need to talk because I feel like I need a dating coach now. So, like, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. I'm here. <laughs> I feel like this whole this whole podcast is just going to be therapy for Raquel today, and everyone's just going <laughs> to make me better. <laughs> um, soul sister, can you share a little bit for me? Yeah, I'm just a regular gal that works and dates, and I guess. I have loads of like discussion with my friend who's part of, you know, the tally team about dating and relationships. And yeah, she thought it was a good idea for me to come on here today. Fantastic. I'm not alone then. I love it. (laughs) Jay, what about yourself? Well, I work in mental health. I, I have been in two failed relationships in the last six years and have recently become single. So Maybe I should describe myself as um, a failed relationship expert, (laughs) new to the whole uh, dating thing. So maybe I could use some coaching as well. Welcome to the club. (laughs) Welcome to the club, Jay. Let's move to Weave. Hello, everybody. My name is Weave. I am a certified life and relationship coach, and I'm just here to lend my voice as well. But just to give some blunt and honest feedback, and obviously, here are some of these other uh, spectacular coaches as well with their experience, too. Lovely. And finally, Jazz. Hi. I already feel like the dinosaur of the group, but I am known as the relationship expert as well. I have a best selling book where I help people with abuse. I've been through it myself an abusive marriage. I'm in a fantastic one now. So I've experienced different aspects of relationships and yeah, looking forward to sharing my insight and hearing what others have to say as well. Fantastic. You know what? I think today I'm even more excited than I thought I was when we started because listeners are going to be given a whole host of fantastic and dynamic advice today and we are going to hopefully have a really good conversation. Let's kick it off with simply what is the talking stage 
and I'm going to go to Soul Sister. What's the talking stage to you? Um, so I'd say the talking stage to me personally is when you're kind of getting to know each other and spending a lot of time talking so that you kind of see if you're on the same wavelength, if you have the same beliefs, values, outlook on life. So I have a question. Mm-hmm. Scenario A, let's call it scenario A. We meet a guy. So for the example, we'll say I meet a guy Mm -hmm. and we work together. So you know how it is when you're at work, you you smile, you laugh, you make your jokes and stuff. Am I in the talking stage? Okay, so I would say I enter talking stage with people because I'm I'm ultimately I want to get married, if that makes sense. I want something long term. So somebody who's at work. I mean, to me, you're just my friend. So obviously as friends, you talk, but I think the talking stage is more to me anyways. I feel like marriage is like a journey. And I feel like for me, the talking stage is for me to kind of figure out, can we both go there? Can we walk together? Yeah. hundred percent makes sense. We've, is the talking stage something that you can have going on with multiple people at a time? Do you think? Absolutely. The talking stage to me is, I would refer to it as the intoxicating stage, right? Because to me, it's essentially where you're most vulnerable. You know, when you're meeting and talking with somebody on a regular basis, whether it's over coffee, whether it's over dinner, having that type of interaction is something that allows for a transfer of feelings, you know? So it's exciting, it's enjoyable. And for all intents and purposes, if it's really somebody you're interested in, it's kind of a magical situation. I like that. Magical situations like romantic movies. I'm going to open the floor up to anyone. What do you feel the talking stage is or isn't? And, you know, let's let's delve a little deeper into that. Jazz? Yes. For me, I think there are a few aspects to the talking stage, starting with the greeting, where you you meet someone and you something about them catches your attention from the time you start saying hello, you're talking. Sadly, sometimes in the talking stage, we're not truly ourselves. Even though you're vulnerable, you could be saying things that you think the other person wants to hear more than this is honestly me. And sometimes it's a good thing. There are reasons why you don't want to say everything one time, almost like you're throwing up on the person. So, yeah. And to build on that too, Jazz, I agree with you. I think Chris Rock had a stand-up comedy about 10 or 15 years ago where he said, when you first start dating someone, you're not really dating them. You're dating their representative until you actually get to delve into that relationship or see it a little bit further. A lot of times it's kind of somebody playing a part versus necessarily being completely genuine and allowing the other person Mm. to kind of get a feel for kind of who you are at a a core level. So I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. You took the words right out of my mouth, Lee. I was going to say the talking stage, you are just meeting the representative. Everybody is on their best behavior for the most part in the talking stage. You're getting to know one another, but there's no commitment made just yet because you have to fill each other out and understand whether or not you want to take this a step further. And that is is also kind of like an interview process, I believe. Well, I I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm the only one with what might be a different view. So I don't see talking stage to be that deep. From what I hear, talking stage would be with only one person at a time. It sounds like dating to me, to be fair. You know, talking stage to me would just be, you know, just talking. Someone looks hot, attractive, you know, you're flirting lightly, just just seeing how it goes, you know, and I would imagine doing talking stage with multiple people at a time and then seeing who will actually get through that audition stage. That's how I see it. I think talking stage, I I like to agree that I also don't think that it's that deep. 
talking stage can also be someone talking to multiple people on different dating sites. So there are people that um, like to multi-date. So there might be someone, I, I once met this lady that I was coaching. She was talking to 30 guys at the same time. Now that's not something that I would recommend because I don't know where someone gets the time and the energy, but I would think that's more of a talking stage. Okay, I think that you guys have given us so much to work with there. And the first thing I'm going to say to that is to air my dirty laundry, I guess, is I kind of don't tell people they're in the talking stage. Is that right or wrong? When when I say that, I mean, for me, I feel as though I can be flirtatious at any time. And it doesn't mean I want to date you. It just means that you said something funny or, I mean, I'll tell someone they just melted my heart because they said, yes, ma'am. And it's not me being like, Hey, I want to date you. It's just like, okay, you said something and I love it. And I can do that. But when I, before I even decide if I want to start really looking at someone romantically, I can be in that kind of talking stage. Cause I like to watch what people are like when they don't know I'm interested in, is that weird? Is that wrong? No, it's not. In fact, what I was thinking about is when a lot of times when people are in the talking stage, they're also in the snooping stage. So <laughs> you're talking to people, be it one or a few, but the one that you find oh, something about them, I'd like to kind of know more. You go dig in on social media, you try to find out a little bit more about them if you didn't know them before. Let's unpack that. Social media, like Insta stalking, Facebook stalking, all of that stuff. Is that a talking stage thing or is that a dating stage thing? Should we even be doing that or should we just be letting the person tell us about themselves? Well, the only thing I do is check Instagram to see if she's hot or if he's hot. So that's, that's all. That's all I do. If the person is fine, I don't care. But then again, that's because, so, so for instance, someone said, oh, I'm looking to get married. I'm just looking to have fun. So it's not that deep for me, you know, mine is just, you know, let's, let's just chill and have fun. So it's, it's never deep enough for me to find out if, I mean, you could be married. I don't care. Yeah. And social media is not really representative of who people are in the first place. Like everything is always a little bit more glamorized, a little bit more photoshopped, a little bit more kind of in your feelings in the moment. So I don't think it's necessarily reflective of, who they may truly be. So I don't know how you know, accurate it is. I mean, you can obviously get a sense if they're <laughs> the total opposite of what you're kind of interested in or, or looking for. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really give you a reflection of who they are in detail. So, okay, personally, doing the Insta, what did we say? We were calling it Insta snooping and Facebook snooping. That was something that I didn't do until after the first date. And I had a feeling that, you know, I would go on another date with this person or I had the feeling that they might be not very truthful about something. So I would have to go, you know, I would go and check to see if I, let's say, see another woman that they're claiming as their girlfriend or whatever. That is when I use social media. Now, beforehand, I rather, you know, I rather be surprised by the person that I'm, you know, getting ready to talk to. I want to be surprised. I don't want to know, I don't want social media to cloud my judgment in any way, if that makes sense. That makes a, a lot of sense. I'm, I'm pretty similar. I kind of don't, my friends will go on their social media before I go on their social media. And normally I don't let, like really care to know until I think that there's something potentially serious down the road kind of thing. Love Fairy, what about you? I think social media can be like, yeah, it's fun. It doesn't matter. But on the other hand, everything that you put out there, even if you're not using your social media for business as a public person, even if you're just a simple person living a simple life, I like to tell my clients to look at your profile, things that you put out there, your Instagram feed, 
also like part of your branding, even like part of your branding. Because if you are someone who is saying, you know, I'm looking for someone very serious, I'm, I'm looking for this serious commitment, I, I want to have a family, start a family and all these things. But every other picture that you have, you holding alcohol, you are not really uh, dressed and you kind of, you saying one thing, but your surroundings and everything around you and your life says something different. So I would say if you are in the stage where you are looking to get into a serious relationship, I would audit my social media the same like when you audit your social media, when you applying for a new job and you know that your potential boss may be able to see all those fun nights out that you had. I think you make a very good point, Lord Ferry. One of the things I look out for, you know, is to see whether someone is a baby girl or a baby boy. And, <laughs> and so when I check the Instagram and I see those alcohol pictures, I'm like, yes, yes, ma, that's what I want. You know, I, I think I agree with you. There was this time, this girl I was talking to in the DMs on Twitter, her, her timeline was filled with very serious stuff, you know, how God will send her a man and, you know, all that serious stuff. And I was like, nope, 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 not this person. They're, they're at a place where I, I don't want to go and, and disturb them and, you know, spoil their energy because I'm just here to have fun. So, yes, totally agree with that, Lord Ferry. So what are some of the best questions we should be asking in the talking stage, AJ? Number one question is, are you involved with someone? Depending on what you're trying to achieve by being in a talking stage and dating someone. So like for someone like Soul Sister who's dating to get married, first thing I would ask is, are you involved with anyone? Is there anybody, you know, that has your attention? Does anybody have any stories about wasted time? Because I definitely do. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of them. <laughs> I've written the whole book about it, but yeah, I'll let others share. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. One story that I can tell you guys is I actually was in the quote unquote talking stage with someone for a remarkable amount of time because they were unwilling to make an, a commitment to me, but they wanted all of the benefits of having a girlfriend, but they refused to move past the talking stage. We were in the talking stage. Oh my gosh. Like a year or so. It was really crazy. Yeah. I think on the flip side of sometimes like you might have someone who may not necessarily be looking for something serious. They might just have gotten out of like a serious relationship and just be looking for casual sex. I've been, I've been with my wife for, 11 years. And that didn't, didn't start out, you know, with us, it started out with like coming to visit <laughs> and hanging out. And it eventually led to six months later and being like, I guess, I guess she's spending so much time here. I probably should, I probably should make this thing official. Cause I really do care about her. So I think it, and I, and I was running, you know, I was running two businesses at the time. So I didn't think I had time, but sometimes things just happen. So it depends on what you're looking for. So I'd like to ask, uh, what do you think about, to anyone part of this conversation, what do you think about when you meet someone and you get so excited and you feel like, oh, this is my soulmate, my palms are getting sweaty, my knees are feeling weak, and I have this amazing soulmate connection, this fire, whatever you want to call it. And then this person says, you know, I'm not looking for a relationship. Can I just say that? So I'm a man. All right. Uh, I mean, I, I think what most people would know by now, but I'm a man and I'm currently in one of my sexual relationships at the moment. That's, that's it. I've made it abundantly clear that I am in that phase of life where I just want to be a whole right? I, you know, I'm not interested in any commitment, anything. I just want to have fun. I just want to fuck and live my life and chill, you know? Um, and this, this lovely, beautiful woman, you know, I said it to her. She's like, okay, that's fine. You know, but she keeps trying to sneak in commitments, you know, and I keep saying, look, look, 
look, that's not what I'm after. You know, and even, even yesterday she was saying things like, oh, you are all mine. And again, I said to her, no, 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 I'm not all yours. Okay. Look, I am for at least at the moment, three other people, you know, but for some reason it's just not getting across. I, I don't know. I've had to say to her, I don't know if you need me to stop being kind to you because maybe it's because, you know, I continue to be kind to you. I, I continue to be a decent person. Someone would say, oh, you give off boyfriend vibes, but you know, I don't know, but yeah. So, so I've said this time without number, it's not getting across. I don't know what to do. And, um, the only other option now from what it seems like would just be to cut her off. And, you know, I, I, I tried blocking her and she came to my house. So I don't know. I don't know. I would say leave her alone. I would yeah, leave her would, alone. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to get hurt. Exactly. I feel like sometimes I'm not saying you, but there are some guys where as much as they're saying that they don't want anything serious, like their ego likes the fact that they're being chased or that somebody likes them that much. So I guess I feel like wherever you're, you are at in life, if you realize that that person isn't on the same page, I think just cut it off immediately because especially if you feel like you have other people, whatever on the side, then I guess it's, it's best to just leave that situation alone. But yeah, I do feel like some guys do string along women as well, even though they say they don't want anything serious. Has anyone had a situation where during the talking stage or the beginning of your relationship interaction, someone is saying, oh, I'm not really looking for anything serious. But then later on, that actually changes. Yeah, it actually changes when they find somebody else they want to have a relationship with. (laughs) 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 Um, Jazz, you... You, you said you were going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say something about what Jay was saying because I was thinking, Jay, for all that you're saying, if you don't leave, then the problem wouldn't be with the other person. It would be with you. If they start stalking you because they think you're the best thing since sliced bread and she already knows where you're living, then that's not going to be good. You maybe might have to pass through your back door to even go and hide <laughs> It's not going to be nice, man. So, yeah, before you have to change your dress, I think you have to kind of be a bit stern and say no. So I actually don't believe it's Jay's responsibility in this specific situation. Since he's made it abundantly clear what he's looking for, I believe there obviously is, there bears responsibility on both sides. But I don't think it's necessarily his responsibility with this specific woman that he's with to have to in a sense, come to some sort of agreement where it's like, hey, I'm not going to, it sounds to me as Jay is saying, like, I'm not going to compromise where I am in my life right now or compromise what I want out of life right now because you want something different. And to me, if he's made that abundantly clear, I mean, my advice would be more so to maybe not hang out with her as much because I mean, anytime you hang, to me, anytime you hang out with someone that you're talking to or dating to me, it's, of course, it's going to be some type of romantic feelings. It's going to be some type of sexual feelings. At the end of the day, that's that doesn't mean girlfriend and boyfriend. That just means like, hey, we're hanging out and we're enjoying ourselves and having fun, which it sounds like Jay's in the, <laughs> Jay's in the stage and right in smack dab in the middle of right now. I just love, Jay, how honest you are. I, I really love that. Thank you for that. Yeah, but I still want to reiterate the problem could come if she decides to start stalking you because what you have to offer, she feels she really, really wants. And all of a sudden the mind gets like she, the blurred lines start to come. And no matter how you try to keep cutting things off because you didn't totally sever ties, she really begins to follow you in a way that is not nice anymore. It's a bit creepy. And that makes you a bit nervous. Sounds like he's already in that stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I'm already there, you know, because because I was in London over the weekend and I couldn't share pictures, you know. The pictures had a handbag. The person I was with kept getting into my pictures for some reason. And so I couldn't share those pictures, although they were really, really nice, you know, just because I was very concerned that this person would say, and then, cause, cause then she gets very hurt and, you know, she gets really sad and I, I really can't deal with all of that. 
So I, I don't know. Even even blocking her is just like too much for her. I, I guess. Well, can I ask? So why can't you block her? Why can't you just cut off all ties with her? Because she will come to my house. She has come to my house. She has rang my friend to say, oh, your friend has blocked me and all of that. I mean, I'm not a relationship expert here, obviously, but I I kind of feel like you've done your part in the sense of, like, you've been upfront and honest from the beginning. You said there are other people there. You've done everything that you could do that I would expect a guy to do to let her know where she is and where you're at. And is is it really worth it? Is is what you're getting really worth this level of stress? Because I'd just be out if it was me and I was where you're at in things. Sex is probably amazing. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. My question is: Is the sex worth like a restraining order? That's what my question is. Oh well, it hasn't gotten to that level yet, but I don't know. But it's, it's worth the stress at the moment. Not gonna lie. But yeah, are you enjoying it a little bit? Be honest. I, I'm I'm trying to figure out how to move away, but I, I need to do it in a way that is not mean or you know, like because I care about her feelings and I don't want her to be too hurt, you know. Um, okay, but I don't know. Can I suggest something, or let me ask you first, Jay? Do you after you guys are done having sex, do you cuddle and stuff with her? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Stop doing it. <laughs> what? That's, that's yeah, making stop her doing that. Stop doing that. Oh, just if if you just wanted to be sex, then you have sex. Everybody after everybody got off, then she goes home. There's no staying around. There's no cuddling because cuddling is boyfriend stuff. So stop doing it. Some people only have sex to cuddle. <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, in this situation, because the way she is, don't cuddle. <laughs> Find somebody else to cuddle with. Oh well, I, I guess I'll I'll try that. I just don't want to. I just don't want to come across as mean or, you know, I don't know. I just I don't understand sometimes when guys say this because I'm like, you don't want to come across as a uh, f boy but you do want to live an F boy lifestyle. And I'm just like, just call it what it is. And like, sorry, they're not the nicest people in the world own that side of it too. And say, bye. See you later. Weave, you were going to say something. Yeah. I was just going to say in Jay's defense, I mean, essentially he has done that. Like he's, he's the one thing that women always say that they want is honesty, right? You want us to be honest. You want us to tell you what it is. And I think it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? He told her what he wants, but then his actions, right? Cuddling, maybe spending a little too much time. Jay, I would tell you, if, you, <laughs> if you're going to go for it, dude, just go balls out. Like at the end of the day, why take this person out of a picture? You know, the person you were with. Like at the end of the day, you're living the life you want to live. So live it. Like don't, don't compromise that just because you feel like you might lose sex. You got three other people. And to me, I think sometimes... It's the lack of options that maybe like keep people from thinking like, oh, they're the one. Like in her case, she might think he's the one. But at the end of the day, he's told her abundantly, made it abundantly clear. Like that's not going to happen. So do you not think that sometimes like the the sex is the problem? Like, well, that would be like cutting my nose to spite the face. But yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I think you have other people now. I, I do have. But if the experience is different, you know, that's why I'm in it. You know, that's why I'm living this life because everybody's different. You know, I'm here for the experience. Fair enough. Like, right right now it's hurting somebody, if that makes sense. I'm not saying it was your fault because you didn't force her to get into it. But now she is being hurt by this. So I feel like we are giving Jay the advice that he hasn't even asked for. And also not to be on anyone's side, but it could be that in regards to that lady, maybe she is not even capable of maintaining a relationship with someone who is really there for her. So even though she's saying, I want a commitment, maybe deep down she's so closed for any kind of commitment that this is the only thing that she can currently tolerate. 
that could be the case. She might like the, function, mm-hmm. the, the dysfunctionality of the whole situation ship, as I would call it. In that case, she's really toxic and I'm scared of her. Um, <laughs> Jazz, do you have anything to say? And then we're going to leave leave Jay and this poor lady alone for a yeah, while. Yeah, because I was, well, I was kind of moving away from it because I was thinking it brings the question of, is it talking stage or is it talking stage with add-ons? Because this has moved away from talking and it's more the doing and the talking. And so you have to decide what you want to do. Which one you prefer? Do I prefer to do more or to talk some more or even to just leave it, you know? So I'm just going to kind of switch it up a bit and I'm just going to tell you guys about something I've been through and a friend of mine have been through recently and um, let you guys do your analyzing. So for me, recently, I was in a talking stage with a gentleman, we'll call him Mr. Spice. And he and I were talking for a little while and we like on paper, I guess, click. And we even played that stupid game, how to fall in love, fall in love with 36 questions or something like that. He wanted to play but I just ended up being like, I think we're just really good friends. Like I don't feel excited or anything. And at the same time, I thought, well, maybe I need to be with someone that doesn't make me so excited. I lose my head. And maybe that would actually lead to a healthier relationship. But I said, okay, let me ask him where he's at. Because we've obviously established that deep of a relationship where we can pretty much openly ask each other questions. And he was like, yeah, I think you're right. We're just friends. So we're just friends. And I kind of friend zoned him and ignored him because I've got a lot going on. I've got two kids. I've got work. I've got uni. I've got so much going on. Like I don't really have time even for my own actual proper friends. And then out of the blue, he messages me and he wants to meet up and hang out. I'm thinking friends. We're not even in the talking stage anymore. We're just friends. Man turns up. And he smells lovely. He looks nice. He did the whole Latino thing where he's got like, you know, the hair, the, the, anyway. And then like, he's there and he starts putting the moves on me, but he doesn't actually go all the way with like trying to pull a move. He just kind of halfway does and I respond, but he still doesn't go any further. And I'm like, okay, what are you trying to do here? You're trying to kiss me. You're not trying to kiss me. He goes home nothing happened. And then he just messages me and goes, Oh, I really wish that something had happened. And I was like, okay, well, you know, for next time, even though I still think, why, why did you do that? And then he goes silent for two days. So I message him and I'm like, what's going on? Are we dating? Are we friends? What happened two days ago? I'm really confused. And he comes back with, I just see you as an attractive friend. And I'm not really sure what I want. So I friend zoned him. Similar situation happened to my girlfriend. She thinks that that's potential for a relationship with a different guy. Similar situation with a different guy. And she sees that as potential for a relationship. What do we think here? In my opinion, it sounds like you're both emotionally unavailable. Just from the standpoint that you may not necessarily know exactly what it is you want. It sounds like there's interest, right? Like there's interest in each other. But if I were you, I'd be concerned with the inconsistencies in behavior. Because to me, you make time for what's important to you. And I'm not a big proponent of the friend zone. So I, if, if it were us talking, if it was we even Raquel talking, I would be like, Hey, look, I'm, I'm not interested in the friend zone. This is what I am interested in. But I think a lot of times some men don't do that. And to, to Jay's point, right. You're cutting off your nose to spite your face. You're putting yourself in a position where now she doesn't even know what you want. And it sounds like you don't really know what you want. So, well, the thing is, I gave him the option. I was like, do you want to be in the friend zone? Because you're not making any moves to make me feel like <laughs> you're really that into me, dude. And it got to the point where I, I'm not, I, I say I'm not, I'm not shy and I'm not like a shrinking violet, but like, I don't want to make the first move. I, 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 I will give you consent to like, you know, why don't you want to make the first move? Because I don't want to, because I'm Latino, because I'm Caribbean, because I'm I'm old enough to say I don't want to. 
Right. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> okay. Just like you want to hoe around, I don't want to make the first move. I want a guy to be a guy. <laughs> like, right. You want him to take the initiative, and obviously he was not. And that honestly, it sounds like it's a turnoff. I mean, it obviously should be. It really was. So yeah. I friend zoned him. I was like, "Do you want to be a friend?" And he said, yes. And then he did that. And now he, he wants to be an attractive friend. So in my view, you're friend zoned, right? Mm, I don't, I can't uh, totally agree with um, what you all are saying because some people are shy and my husband was the kind of shy guy as well. And and so sometimes you're, he's trying to read. He's not reading as clearly as he think he is. He's not sure. He doesn't want to hurt your feelings. And what this calls for is to me a super clear conversation where you're asking him things to kind of figure out what he was really trying to do. Because sometimes when you think you're asking or saying things clearly, you're not as clear as you can be. But I don't think Raquel's, I I'm, I'm think Raquel's saying like she doesn't want it to be her responsibility to have to do that. Being as though he showed up in his suit and his, in his slick back hair. Yeah. Right. And not just that, like we'd already had that conversation. He said friend. And then he came in, clearly made moves like he wasn't a friend. I responded to those moves and he himself shut it down to the point that when he left, he then went, oh, I wish I did something. And I'm like, wait, are we talking again? Are we dating again? What's going on? And I actually asked him. So for me, you've done this twice now. You chose friend twice. You are now fr- a friend. And, and I don't see any potential anymore for a relationship. Mm. But my girlfriend, who's in the similar position, she sees this as still the talking stage. And like, it's all good. And we can still play these games. Do you think it's still a game situation? Or do you think it's a... It's a game situation. I think so too. And I think that's when you, you pull out, right? And you're like, yeah. I don't want to play this or I do want to play this. And for me, it's an I don't want to play Are this. both of you going to have sex or not? I'm not sleeping with him. I don't sleep with people that I'm not in a relationship with. That's just ah, me. I, I, that may make the difference, you know. Maybe that's the clarity he wants. <laughs> it, oh, he knew that. <laughs> he knew that. Yeah, but then when a woman says, I don't sleep with guys unless I'm in a relationship, that's a massive challenge for him. And then he's like, I'm going to prove something different. Sometimes that happens. But in, in this case, it doesn't sound like he wanted to prove that. Because he no. it sounds like he had the opportunity to. It could be that he's teasing, could also be that he lacks self-confidence. Maybe he's brainwashed by me too, and he's even too scared to touch you. Could be many different reasons. Okay, but the whole ghosting element of it, that gives that gives me the sense that like you disappear for two days after you've done this really weird thing. That makes me feel a bit like, where do I stand? And personally, I need to protect my like mental health side of things. So I'm not going to go and play that game. And do you think like that that's a healthy thing for people to be doing in when they're talking, like disappear for three days, come back to the conversation? No, it's not healthy. I mean, I don't know what exactly happened, but it could have been that he wanted, he wanted to do something, but he wasn't sure if you wanted to. So it's like he initiated something, but maybe to him, you didn't reciprocate it. And, it could have also been that he felt uncomfortable with the situation, if that makes sense. I mean, I'm not saying he felt uncomfortable with the situation he put himself in. Yeah, but still, like he could have felt like you didn't reciprocate it, and he was just a bit like embarrassed, if you know what I mean. And that's okay. why he didn't get in contact. I mean, I don't know, but I feel like that's why, especially when you're in a talking stage, that you talk about these things and you so you can hear that person out. And I mean, he did say to you that he finds you he thinks that you're just an attractive friend. And I feel like that to me is my answer, if that makes sense. Exactly. So for me, I'm like, okay, well I can be your hot friend that you don't turn up and start like pulling moves on. (laughs) Exactly. I was just saying that at that point, that's where I would have had my answer. But if that makes sense. So I feel like it's good that you approached him and you said, Oh, what is this? You know, and he was able to, I guess, explain himself or say what he's thinking. And yeah. Okay. What do we think about ghosting? Is that something that we should do or not do? You should not ghost. Ghost is ghosting is immature and it can lead to a lot of really, really hurt feelings. And 
if the person, okay, so here's a scenario. If you had, if you're had sex with somebody and you guys are trying to figure things out, but you figured out that you don't want to be with that person. And then you just stop talking to them for however long. And in that person's mind, you guys had a great connection. The sex was great and everything. And, but ghosting them may drive them a little crazy as in, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out what happened. Where are you? Let me go to your social media to see what you're doing. Like, and call you 50 million times and text you a hundred times. And it, it's not good for your mental health. So I understand why some people would ghost. It, it can be a very difficult conversation to have. So sometimes people want, I, I don't know, some people want people to get the message, but you know, don't just feel comfortable enough to have that conversation with them. Personally, I haven't ghosted anybody. I've only just eased my way out of situations. But yes, I can. I don't know whether someone has ghosted on me before. Maybe I, I don't know. I don't remember. But yeah, I, I would say that for people who attach things like self worth to being wanted and the success of their talking stages, ghosting can be very negatively impactful on their mental health. So, so if if say a guy or a lady, whoever, say you're on Bumble, you know, and people just ghost on you all the time. You, you may start to feel unattractive and, you know, that can impact how you see yourself. And, you know, if you already struggle with self-esteem issues, having people ghost on you, especially having people ghost on you multiple times in close succession can really impact self-image. I was also going to add and say that what I, I personally don't like about ghosting is that it's a bit cowardly. And I actually, what I feel like I've seen happens a lot is that because you haven't fully closed that chapter, that person can come back and just be like, Oh, you know, I was going through a lot of stuff, you know? And for me, it's like, if you're not interested, just make it clear and then live with your decision. But I feel like when you go to someone, sometimes after a few months, they decide to go back because they never had that conversation to actually like fully end it with you. If that makes sense. So that is my biggest problem about like the whole ghosting thing. Just as time in, I there's so many different like sometimes that stuff's mind games too. Like, you know, some of the ghosting, you know, it's somebody who went on and watched a video on YouTube That's or read true. some or read some book about, oh hey, you know, don't text back for this long, don't call him for three days. And at the end of the day, I mean, I always <laughs> I compare ghosting to like online shopping, like how you go online, maybe you add a few things to your shopping cart. Like normally, if you're not ready to purchase right at this moment. What happens? You leave it in the cart and say, I'll just come back to it later. I'll add it to a wish list. But what happens when you put something in the cart and then you suddenly says, hey, you only got two left. You need to order now or we're going to be out of stock. Like you usually have more of a sense of urgency. So to me, it's the same thing in dating and relationships. The more we attract and meet people who aren't ready to check out, and like maybe are only just window shopping or only looking for specific things, but aren't expressing that to the person they're dating, the more you get left in the cart or the wish list for them to come back later to say, oh, hey, by the way, I'm ready for you now. But now a lot of times it's too late. That's a great analogy, Lee. Thank you. I really, I really like that analogy as well. So if you feel like you've been left in the cart, for any listeners who feel like they've been left in the cart, what do we, what do we do to leave, like get out of that situation? Do you take yourself out of that situation? Do you give it time? How much time do you give it? Because... I keep hearing people, I don't agree with this, but I keep hearing people say like, oh, he just needs some time and like, you know, he'll figure it out. I will take myself out of such situations. But then again, it's easy for me because at every point in time, I mean, when, when I'm in that mind space where I'm talking to people, I'm talking to multiple people. If one person goes, I'm probably too busy talking to somebody else anyway. But yeah, if, 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 if anyone's listening and they feel like they've been left in the car, by all means, just walk, walk away, really. I would always say that people should look after themselves and their well-being. If someone has shown that they're poor at communicating and would just disappear for days on end, then, I mean, that's something you can't put up with anyway, or you shouldn't put up with. And, and if you're someone who likes to talk and likes to communicate, 
clearly this will not work. Even if you, you get into a relationship with them, chances are they'll, they'll ghost from time to time. So just look after yourself and take yourself out of that situation. Thanks, you guys. I feel like this podcast could be two podcasts, to be fair, because um, there's so much when it comes to dating and, and what people think is right or wrong or where to go next kind of thing. So just to wrap it up, I like to wrap it up by asking for any last minute dating tips or advice. Love Fairy, do you want to kick us off? I want to mention something on ghosting is that when you hold on to ghosts, you hold on to those people that you think may be coming back, but they don't, or they're playing these games. You are not allowing the, someone that you truly would like to attract into your life. So I like to give this analogy, you know, if you have a, a closet filled with beautiful dresses and then you keep buying one after another and, and it's so full that you can't even see what's in there. So there's just that much, you know, your eyes can see and it's same with people that you're attracting in your life. If you're holding on to those ghosts and you don't really have enough space in your heart, in yourself, you know, even mentally to attract someone that you would truly would like to be with. Thank you. I think that's a really good last final thought kind of way to go with, with it. And what about yourself, AJ? I would say if you are in the talking stage, take your time to get to know this person. Don't jump all in right away because they may not be the person for you. And once you realize that you guys are not going to be a, in a relationship long term, go ahead and make your exit. It's okay to, you know, leave that person alone and maybe just be friends or just stop talking altogether. But definitely take your time to get to know this person in your talking stage. That's beautiful advice. I 100% agree. Can I also just add that you can't argue with peace. And I feel like if the person is, is robbing you from just being at, at a peaceful state of mind and just adding stress to your life, I think usually that's an indicator that they might not be the best option for you. I'm not saying everything is always going to be perfect, but that's if that's your constant state, it's just one of anxiety, stress, wandering, and all of that, then I just feel like it might not be the best option for you. Like it should be on your mind or they should be on your mind and like it'd be a positive thing. Exactly. And I feel like sometimes if you don't know, just pay attention to like the peace within you. If you're at peace because like I mean most of the times when the friends we have I mean I'm not here 24 7 thinking about my friends whether they're good or bad or they're not causing me anxiety and stuff like that it's easy you know just to kind of use that to gauge whether you should continue with a relationship or not hmm. Jay any final thoughts I'd say it's it's good that people um, define what what they want for themselves first of all and uh, what they want with the people they talk to. And, you know, I, I would encourage people to be honest. And if if something is not what you want, then by all means, you know, leave. If along the line, what you want changes, then be honest enough to say, right, my needs have changed, my expectations have changed. And if it's not something they can provide, by all means, leave. As I said before, please prioritize your well-being, look after your mental health, just take yourself out of any situation that will stress you. It's, it's totally not needed at all. Thank you, Jay. I so enjoyed you tonight. Uh, you just were so free and honest and, and I really wish you the best of luck as you go forward with your dating as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope you have great fun going forward. Weave, what about you? I would say, you know, when someone, you know, as my Angela once said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. The first time, you know, from a mental health standpoint, it's super important that we take more value in ourselves. You know, a lot of times we prioritize the value other people put on us or how they perceive us as being like, hey, this is the standard. This is what I need to live by. But so many times we don't take into account, like, you know, how we feel about ourselves, you know, loving yourself first, putting yourself first. And I think it's, it's OK for stuff to hurt. You know, for some, you know, when, when ghosting happens, when somebody breaks your heart, like at the end of the day, it's a part of life. It's a part of your 
it's a part of your growth and evolution as an individual. And it also can show you what you don't want out of the next person that comes into your life in the talking stage, dating stage, relationship, marriage, it doesn't matter. So just put yourself first and uh, always consider your feelings above everyone else. Last but not least, Jazz. Yeah, I said to know what you want. As Jay said, you want to speak up and be honest about what's happening with you. Don't be afraid to ask questions. In fact, in the token stage, you want to ask as more, much questions as possible. Leave if it's for your best interest. And you could say that you're leaving, like this thing is coming to an end, unless you think the person is some kind of weirdo. Then maybe just sneak out, tiptoe your way out. And lastly, kind of similar to what we were saying, is a quote from Maya Angelou about courage about courage being the greatest of all the virtues because it takes courage to say you've changed your mind. It takes courage to stand up and decide to do something that might not be good for the other person, but it's good for you. So be courageous. Thank you. I think today we've really gone from quoting Maya Angelou to <laughs> talking about every aspect that we could uh, on the talking stage and it's been fantastic so thank you everyone for your thoughts and your input into it all I think the key things that I'm gonna wrap everything up with are be safe and honest put yourself first your health first in this situation understand that you know, when someone shows you who they really are the first time, we should believe them. And the talking stage is probably the best time to see that. And enjoy yourself, have fun, and know when you need to walk away. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day or night. Thank you for listening to the Tally Talk podcast. Remember to subscribe to our channel and be the first to access our weekly episodes. If you would like to leave us a comment, then please email at hello at tallytalk.com. We would love to hear your thoughts and suggestions. For all other inquiries, please visit www.tallyapp.com. Thank you and see you next time.